Kyle Inc. incurred a net operating loss of $580,000 in 2020. Combined income for 2017, 2018, and 2019 was $460,000. The tax rate for all years is 30%. Prepare the journal entries to record the benefits of the carry back and the carry forward, assuming it is more likely than not that the benefits of the loss carry forward will be realized. Okay. So we've got here that they had a loss at 580 and they can recover 460. So of course we need to, we can recognize an income tax receivable for a loss carry back with the tax, with the taxable income times the tax rate. So our, so we're gonna take the um, tax paid is gonna be 460,000 times 30% tax rate, which is gonna equal 138,000. So this is the tax loss carry back that we're gonna recognize. So we're gonna recognize debit, income tax receivable. If I can write here, 138,000. And this is gonna be a current asset on our statement of financial position because we will actually get a check back for this amount in the mail and credit current tax benefit. And this is actually going to reduce our total income tax expense on the income statement. Okay, so that's the tax loss carry back. Now we also have a carry forward. So this is the carry now, what about the carry forward? Well, what do we have left to carry forward? So we had, we have a, sorry, we have, <clears throat> where are we here? So we have 580 and we claimed 460. So we've got 580 minus 460. 460, sorry, 460, my goodness, that's terrible. So we have what amount left? We've got 580 minus 460. We've got 120,000 left times the 30% tax rate is gonna give us 36,000 we can carry forward. So our, our carry forward is going to be debit deferred tax asset and this is a statement of financial position account and IFRS requires it to be non-current and credit deferred tax benefit. And this is actually gonna reduce our total income tax expense on the income statement, deferred tax benefit. And this is gonna be a P&L account that is gonna reduce our total income tax expense. So we've got our two entries here. This is the carry back and this is the carry forward. Okay, so that's part one. So part two, assume instead that it is more likely than not that the entire tax loss carry forward will not be realized. Prepare all the journal entries that are necessary at the end of 2020, assuming that Kyle does not use a valuation account and that Kyle does use a valuation account. So if Kyle doesn't use a valuation account, let me just change the color here. If Kyle doesn't use a valuation account, then so let's go part two, didn't change. Okay, part two. So no valuation. Was it? it that it is more likely than not that the entire cash flow will not be realized. So it's not more likely than not. So we're still just gonna recognize the same carry back. So the carry back is not impacted by the more likely or not. And I won't repeat that journal entry. It's just this one here. 
this journal entry for the carry back, but there's no entry for the carry forward. No journal entry for carry forward using the direct approach, using I for S. Now the question also asked what the journal entry would be if we used a valuation account. And if we used a valuation account, then, so if use valuation account, under ASPE, remembering this is not even allowed, allowed under IFRS, then we're gonna report a debit deferred tax asset. And this is the same amount we had up here of the 36,000. The amount isn't changing. And credit, the credit is gonna be to a allowance account. Actually, the credit is gonna be the same entry here, deferred tax benefit. So it goes through. So we basically set up the exact same entry we would have set up under IFRS if it was more likely than not, even though it's not. And then we basically reverse it out. So then we say debit, deferred tax expense. Credit. Allowance. to reduce deferred tax asset to net realizable value of zero. So then these are gonna be 36,000 and 36,000. So they basically offset because here we've got the asset and then here we've got the allowance. So these essentially net. And then here we've got a deferred tax asset that's going through our PL is a positive recovery and then here we've got an expense. So those are kind of netting off. Okay, so that's part two. My writing is terrible today, please forgive me. Part three, assume now that Kyle earns taxable income of $25,000 in 2021 and that at the end of 2021, there is still too much uncertainty to recognize a deferred tax asset. Prepare all the journal entries that are necessary at the end of 2021 assuming that A, Kyle does not use a valuation account and that Kyle uses a valuation account. So now they have taxable income of $25,000. And then at the end of 2021, there's too much uncertainty to recognize a deferred tax asset. Okay, so we've got $25,000 times the tax rate of 30%, let's see. Okay, so part C. Okay, so we've got the direct approach. We're gonna record the current tax expense. Uh, and they said that they, he made $25,000 times 30% tax rate, which is going to be, sorry, which is going to be 7,500 and credit income tax payable. Of 7,500. And then we are going to say, well, wait a minute, we actually don't need to pay out anything because we have a we have tax losses that we can apply. So then we're going to go debit, income tax payable. Of seventy five hundred, reversing these two accounts, and then we're going to go credit current tax benefit. And this is an income statement account current tax benefit that will offset our current income tax expense. And the reason why we show them gross is because we need to show them separately um, as part of our financial statement as the components. 
Okay, so now let's look at the allowance account or the allowance approach. Ask the only. Then we are going to have, see, we're going to have debit, deferred tax expense. Because remember, we set up the deferred tax expense. We set up the deferred tax, and then we're going to go credit deferred tax asset. And then we're going to use, then we're going to reduce our allowance. So then we're going to go debit allowance to reduce deferred tax asset to net realizable value of zero. We're going to move, reduce that by 7,500. And then we are going to credit our deferred tax benefit. of 7,500. So what did we actually do here? So we've got our tax expense and our deferred tax benefit. So just like above, those two are gonna offset, even though they're gonna be presented gross on in the income statement. And here we reduced our asset, but we also reduced our allowance. Of course, we can't keep the allowance on, keep the deferred tax asset on the books because we're using it up here. And that also permits us to reduce the allowance. So that takes us through part three.